Good morning, y'all. Hey, Cheryl. Awake, and you did not have to literally get up off the um out the bed. Darla. Hey, Darla. Hey, Cheryl. Okay, it's Sunday morning. Good morning, everybody. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, I'm Donna Green Goodman. I'm a public health educator. But I was trained in home economics before I began to do all that work. I'm a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a friend, a health educator, and a plant-based cook. And for the last eight or nine weeks, America has been experiencing this whole lockdown because of COVID-19. And I got to thinking about both of us who are easing our way back into society, as well as um how we're gonna go because we know we need to do masks we know we need to social distance physical distance when we get back out keeping six feet away from everybody as best that you can if you don't have to fight somebody who's in your space but the thing that i thought about as a public health educator is how can we build our body's immune systems because immunity strong immunity is key to keeping healthy and so as we're coming out of covid i figured we could do this easy like sunday morning presentation for the next several weeks where we literally demonstrate some recipes and um, I'll be talking about some things that you can do for your lifestyle to improve it, which I call talking, tasting, and testifying. So on last week, I invited you to come back and join us. <clears throat> and if you're interested in cooking with us, um, there's an ebook. I've written three books, something to shout about cooking up good health and still cooking up good health and still cooking up good health is an ebook that's available on our website. You go to our website, lifestyletherapeutics.com, scroll down to the bottom, click on Shop for Better Health, and it'll take you to the page where you can buy a copy of Still Cooking Up Good Health. There are two versions of it. One is a PDF version, the other is an iBook. And if you want to cook along with me for the next several weeks, you need to get a copy of the iBook from the website. Those of you who um, purchased the PDF version, when I get your order, I'll give you the password because it's password protected. That book is a compilation of a number of recipes that I've done. There are pictures in this edition of it. There are steps to better living. There are the seven steps for better health and how you can literally implement those in your life. There are links to health professionals. I graduated from the best HBCU campus in the world, Oak Ridge University. And a number of us who trained there for our undergraduate degrees continued on and became dietitians and physicians and physical therapists and so on and so forth. And many of us believe in and practice what we call the seven steps for better health, including a plant-based diet. And so if you're interested in finding any health professionals like that who look like me, those are also in the book. There are links to plant-based restaurants. There are meal plans. There's a month worth of meal plans in case someone's looking for menu ideas. And there are links to videos on our YouTube channel. All this in the download ebook, Still Cooking Up Good Health. And so if you want to join us for cooking, you need to get the book because we're going to be using recipes from there. Today we're making angel biscuits. And when I was a home economist for the George Extension Service many, many years ago, um, I was first introduced to these amazing angel biscuits. And angel biscuits are a little um, heavy, not heavy, but they have more structure than a bacon powder biscuit because you add yeast to them. And we would make them and they were just amazing. <clears throat> and my boss used to serve them with this cream gravy that had sausage and ham and all that in there. And there were several vegetarians on the staff and she would always make a vegetarian version for us of this white gravy. And so since my breast cancer diagnosis 24 years ago, I've been about trying to make food that is good for you, tastes good. And one of the things that I did was to convert um, this angel biscuit recipe. And again, the recipe is in the download. So for those of you who are cooking with me, you've already gotten all your instructions and you should have all of your stuff ready to go, just like I have here. And I'm gonna talk you through it. One of the reasons that I like the angel biscuits is because they hold together better and they make delicious sandwiches. 
a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago now, my niece Cheryl Drew was in town with us and we were cooking for our cousin Marshall Kelly and I made these biscuits one morning and she and my husband cleaned them out. And so I had to make another bunch the next day. Then my cousins Eric and his wife, um, Lori, were in town and Jane and Nadine and we took some over to them. And Cousin Marcia wanted more, and my husband keeps eating them. So usually when I make them now, I make more than one recipe. I double the recipe because they are just angelic, literally. Okay, so we have the um, flour and everything already in our bowl. And what we're going to do next is put in our fat. And you can use whatever kind of fat you want. We're cutting the fat into the flour here. And, of course, I like to use a fork. Those of you who are um, more gourmet and have a biscuit pastry cutter, you can use one of those. I think I have one here. I'm like, I don't. I just prefer using a fork. And then those of you who are old school country um, may just use your hands like your grandmama did until you get um, the consistency that you want. And what you're literally trying to do is take this from a flour consistency to a cornmeal consistency and you're mashing up the fat in the flour so that it's evenly distributed all over the um, flour so that every time you bite into it there's this amazing deliciousness that pops into your mouth. So those of you who are cooking at home just continue to cut in and you will watch the flour change into this um, more cornmeal looking thing. And once it's there, then you'll know that it's ready. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds to get it where you need to be. This is something that I thoroughly enjoy doing when we were raising our son. He was always in the kitchen helping me. And I think that's a good thing to do. And then if you are still blessed to have parents, grandparents of your children, if you have them in the kitchen, that's something that's really good to do. And you teach so many amazing, healthy principles and the skill of cooking because one of the things I learned when I was cooking at Oakwood, I mean teaching the vegan class at Oakwood, was a lot of my students didn't know how to get around in the kitchen. And that was kind of scary. I'm not talking about what kind of kitchen cup to use. I'm talking about people didn't know what the broiler was on the stove. And that kind of blew my mind. Okay, so this is about ready now. That's all you have to do. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is dump in my buttermilk. And buttermilk, of course, is a southern thing when it comes to making biscuits. And I'm going to add my yeast. And then I'm going to stir this up. One thing that I learned from my mom as a child when it came to baking bread was that sticky dough makes the lighter biscuit or, or roll. And so a lot of times people are trying to make bread and the heat and the way the recipe says and then the bread turns out to be dry. I find that it's much easier and lighter if you have a sticky dough. So because it's kind of humid outside today, this has really gotten sticky quickly and it's probably a little stickier than I normally would want it. So I have a little flour here and I'm just going to add a little more flour to this and then we're going to dump it out and get to making biscuits, y'all. Okay. What I have literally is a piece of parchment paper. I have learned that I prefer that when I'm doing biscuits or bread over even doing it straight on the counter. And it always makes for easier cleanup when you do it that way. Then I'm going to take my dough dump it onto the flour. Because the dough is still sticky, I'm going to add some more flour to the dough, and I'm going to put some flour on my hands. And I'm going to pat it down, and then this is how we're going to knead it for a few minutes. We're going to take the paper, and we're going to turn it like that, and you see it's sticking, so I need to put a little more dough here. And then we're going to take the paper and turn it like that. And we'll do that a couple times just to get our hands in it. And we're going to turn it again. And we're going to keep turning it. I'll probably do this about three or four times. And then because as a home economist, when I work for the Georgia Extension Service, 
one of our jobs in the county was to literally be available to all the people in the county when it came to things related to the home. And when it came to cooking stuff, we really had to be on top of the latest whatever. <clears throat> and so what I like to do when my husband will turn over sometimes when we're in the bed, what are you doing? And I'm online looking at recipes. And so I was doing that one day and I came across this little tip that I'm going to give you for making the biscuits even lighter and full of layers. What we're going to do now is take the dough and fold it into thirds. And we're going to keep doing that. So you folded it once and you flatten it out and then you're going to fold it into thirds again. And the more of those folds that you do, the more layers that you're going to get in the biscuit. When we first got married, my husband was being so helpful and we were going to have biscuits or pancakes or something and he's going to go to the store and buy some biscuit or pancake mix. I'm like, mm, no, we don't do that here. And so we started making biscuits. He was doing home health physical therapy at the time, and he went to some patient's house, and she served him some biscuits. I think the biscuits had lard in them. But he came home talking about these amazing biscuits she had made, and I'm like, they can't be as good as mine. So for the next six or eight weeks, I made biscuits for him every Sunday morning until I got close to what he was used to eating. You see how I'm doing this? Now we're going to do thirds again, and you can do it as many times as you like. Your dough should not be quite sticky. And as good as those biscuits were that I came up with back in 1984, 85, literally, when I made these biscuits recently, he said, okay, Donna, after 36 years of marriage, I really think that you have gotten it where you're supposed to have it now. Okay, we're going to fold again. And then we're going to flatten out. A little more flour here. And I hope those of you who are cooking are right along with me. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to get some stuff together while I just do a little chatting. One of the ingredients for biscuits of any kind is, of course, baking powder. And if you are a person who does quick breads, I want you to understand that your traditional baking powder, which I don't have here, is one that has baking soda and aluminum in it. And we know that aluminum um, negatively impacts the brain. So I try to stay away from baking powders that have aluminum. If you're, and this one here, Rumford, doesn't have aluminum in it. If you are looking to reduce your sodium intake, also know that sodium bicarbonate is for the most part in your baking powders as well. This one and Rumford both have sodium bicarbonate, but they do not have aluminum. I tend to use this brand, which is Hain Featherweight Baking Powder. It does not have the baking soda or the aluminum in it. And a lot of people use baking soda in their cooking to keep stuff bright and colory and everything. The challenge with that is your, um, it also kills um, some of your nutrients. And so if that's a concern from you, I would steer away from using the baking soda as much and find a baking powder that doesn't have the deleterious effect on the body. All right, now it's time to cut the biscuits. If you were making appetizer biscuits, you would want a little cutter like this. And again, I usually go to the grocery store looking for that sort of stuff. Normal size biscuits are this size cutter, which is like this one too, which is that donut one. And this is another one that I use. It has a little hole in it so that the air can come out. If you're old school or don't have a biscuit cutter, you can use a cup. All you need to do is dip it in the flour, and then you can do your cutting. Because I'm making these for Bay, I'm making some big ones for him today. So I'm going to use the big biscuit cutter <coughs> so he can have a big old sandwich. And remember, the larger you cut them, the less you will have. This biscuit makes, I mean, recipe makes between 12 and 14. And so if that's what you want, you might want to use the regular size one. But if you just want some big old juicy biscuits, this is what you want to do. Everybody should be cutting with me now. Those of you who are cooking. Okay, so I have the first six. Then I'm going to pull this dough and put it back in a little ball and cut some more. If you can feel this, it is so light. And that's, again, another thing my mom taught me. I'm just so thankful that my parents 
enjoy cooking and, and instill that love in me and my brother, which I have passed on to my son. Um, you can tell how the dough feels, whether it's going to be light or, or tough. And these feel really, really good. Now we have nine, and we're supposed to get three more. Usually when I get to this period, and I'm running out of dough, I'll probably get another two good ones cut, and then I'll just do a hand biscuit for the last one. There we go. That together. Here we go. And then we'll do this with our hands. Now, because these are yeast biscuits, we can't put these right in the oven. These are literally going to have to rise for about 45 minutes to an hour or until they're double in bulk. And I have just fallen in love with the benefits of parchment paper. Used to be that my mom would grease the pan and put all of the bread or whatever she was baking in the pan. I now tend to use parchment paper to bake like my cookies and all that sort of stuff. And so I just have a pan here that has parchment paper in it. And I'm going to put these 12 biscuits right here on the pan. And then we're going to let these rise for about an hour. And you can probably see how thick they already are. Maybe like an inch almost. So that means they're going to swell up even higher than this. And be just amazing and delicious and healthy for you. Because we have substituted all of the ingredients that would normally go in the biscuit that would not be as healthy for you. Then what you can do, you can put them in a pan like this. Or if you want to, you can put them in your skillet. You can spray your skillet or put parchment paper in there. And remember, anything that you're cooking in an iron skillet, the food absorbs the iron. And then your body absorbs the iron. And that helps with any type of behavior that you may have. What I like to collect when I travel are tea towels. And so I'm just going to put a tea towel on top of this and let it rise for about an hour. When we're done here, my husband and I will probably take a walk. And when we come back, it'll be time to put these in the oven. I've got a tea towel here. We're going to cover that. And we're going to let it rise. Now, one of the things that I promised we would do when we get together on Sunday is to talk and taste and testify. And I wanted to share with you in the book, literally, there are some ingredients and ideas that you can incorporate into your life as we're moving forward and coming out of COVID. And so if you have the book, um, there's a section in there where we go through seven steps to better health. And this week, <clears throat> the one that we're going to talk about is getting enough rest. As I began to watch COVID-19 unfold because of my training in public health and my interaction with many of the patients that we have and my own experience with breast cancer, I was reminded how important sleep is. And when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was stunned to find out that um, part of the reason that I could have actually gotten the breast cancer was because my immune system had been compromised because I didn't get enough sleep. And so as I watch COVID-19 unfold, I start to think about <clears throat> how many of us are getting enough sleep. And during the weeks that we were on lockdown, I did not do a bunch of cooking. I cooked on the weekend. We ate all week. I um, thought about making masks, but the lady who works at our office made them, so I didn't have to make those. I thought about doing some other stuff that I hadn't done for a while, but all I decided to do was sleep. And I would sit outside in the sun for a couple of hours, and then I would come in the house, and I would be dead asleep at like 7, 30, 8 o'clock, and sleep until 3 or 4 o'clock the next morning. And one of the things that's very important for immune health is all of the really great um, white blood cells that protect you from things like COVID-19 and the flu and other stuff that you may be exposed to happen to be produced at night when you're sleeping. And to give yourself that sleep every single night before 10 o'clock at night, if you're in the bed between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, you literally are working with the circadian rhythm that God has placed in our bodies. And if you get that sleep, when you wake up in the morning, you don't need an alarm clock or anything because your body has literally 
regenerated itself and cleaned out all the bad stuff that's not there and the information that I'm talking about is filing it in your brain so you can recall it. And your body is now prepared to go forth into the day and handle whatever is thrown at it. So every 24 hours, you need to get that good sleep. And I'm telling you, my husband and I will be watching TV or sitting there talking and listening to worship. We've been having some amazing things at the first church online. And the next thing he said, I was snoring. And then I would wake up at like 3.30 in the morning every day. And so I started to use that time to pray because a lot of my friends were affected by this, this virus. And I'm covering my children and grands in prayer and, you know, just, just talking to Jesus about some things. And then when we got up, it was like six o'clock. We had worship and then we go for a walk. And I just begin to feel so much better. So the 24 hours circadian rhythm is very important. And then once a week, we know how important it is to take a rest. Jesus rested on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. And my husband and I are practic practicers of that. But he decided to look into nature, and he discovered that on the seventh day of the week, even nature rests. Google it. You'd be amazed what the scientists have found out. And if you take a Sabbath rest every week, do you know how many weeks of vacation that is? Yeah, about seven weeks of vacation that you're getting just because you're taking this rest. And we've noticed that your um, white blood cells are better. You feel better on that day because that's the way that we were designed. So if you have the book already, I want you to go into the introduction part. And I want you to find the page that says, go to sleep every night between 9.30 and 10 o'clock. And on that page, <clears throat> you can find a little chart that you can mark off what you did last week. Were you up to 11? Were you watching Becoming? Were you playing games? Were you on the phone with your girlfriends? Usually my best friend and I talk early in the morning. We can't be played at night. And just kind of keep a record of what you did last week. And then for the next 10 days, starting tonight, I want you to go to bed. Go to bed early and see what happens when you wake up the next morning. And then I want you to tell me how you feel throughout the week. Did you get really good sleep that's going to make a difference in your life? Um, as your business are rising, you probably want to make some grits, some gravy, maybe some veggie tofu, or some of that just egg to go with it. <clears throat> have some jelly on hand. Um, I think I'm going to show you this jelly because I have found this one and I absolutely love it. For many years, I ate the Polaner jelly that is sweet with fruit juice. And then I found St. Dolphur. And I'm telling you, this is the best jelly besides my homemade jelly, y'all. Get you some jelly out of those biscuits. We like to make um, veggie ham and cheese sandwiches out of the biscuits. Sometimes we don't do anything but eat the biscuits straight out of the oven. Once they have risen and you bake them, then you're going to brush them top with some melted butter. And if you are one of those who are online, I think Vivian is one and Desmond is one who's cooking with me. Make sure that you post the picture somewhere in the feed or on my page or on our business page, Lifestyle Therapeutic, so that we can see what, how things turned out. Um, it's about time for me to go. This has been joyous. I'll be here next week. Have you decided what we're going to cook yet? I was thinking about making some banana muffins. That recipe is in the book, too. But I'll talk to the group who is in the actual hands-on cooking class to see if there's something else that they want to make. And then I'll be here at 7 o'clock next, next Sunday for us to cook up good health. Thanks for joining us. I'm Donna Green Goodman. I am a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a friend, and a friend. I'm entering year 25 and I've been through the good God by changing how I live. I'm hoping that you'll tune in every week to join us here on Facebook Live or Instagram as we're coming out of the as we're coming out of COVID. And we're going to talk, and we're going to taste, and we're going to testify about the goodness of the Lord. And I hope that as you head out of COVID, that you are making the best choices that you can so that you will insulate yourself from the people who are out there on COVID and coughing in your face and all that sort of stuff. But especially because we, as people of color, have been impacted the most from this horrible um, virus. And if we can make choices that are better, we can improve our immunity, improve the immunity of others, and increase the health of the people that we know and love in our community. 
which is something that I'm really committed to, changing the health disparities of people who look like me. Plant power, baby. This is the way you're going to do it. Enjoy those biscuits. And remember, if you want to cook with us, go to the website, lifestyletherapeutics.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Click on Shop for Better Health. It'll take you to our store where you can order all of the books if you want. But if you want to get the ebook, click on the one that you need, either the PDF version or the iBook version. And I will send you the password for the PDF version once I get your order. And you can join the rest of us who are cooking up good health. I believe we have someone who's joined us from Bermuda this morning. I knew her as Miss Pride when we were growing up in Alabama. Hope you're here. I know the business is going to be amazing. Thanks for joining me. See you next week.